Let me ask you this thing about DNA and RNA. You need both to interact with each other. You've got neither starting out. How do you get there? Well, and this is what's called the chicken and egg paradox by Origin of Life researchers. Everybody thinks that DNA can replicate itself. Well, it really can't. It needs an ensemble of cell, cellular, or actually molecular machines to actually replicate it. But the, the problem is, is that the information needed to make those proteins that are involved in replicating DNA are contained by the DNA. So you can't have DNA replication without proteins, and you can't have proteins without DNA. And the way that the original life community kind of resolves, if you will, this chicken and egg problem is to say, well, there was another molecule that predated DNA and proteins that gave rise to DNA and proteins, and they, they call this RNA. And RNA is found in, in contemporary biochemical systems as an intermediary between the information in DNA and the production of proteins. And so original life researchers said, well, maybe there is this RNA world where all these RNA molecules simultaneously served as the information source and as the, the molecules that carried out the cell's activity. And what's wrong with that? Well, nobody knows how to produce RNA or the building blocks of RNA on the primordial Earth. In fact, Hugh and I last summer went to the uh, International Conference on the Origin of Life and a scientist named Leslie Orgel, who's not probably known in, as a household name, but in the scientific arena, is a well-known Origin of Life researcher made the comment in the opening talk that if a strand of RNA would have appeared on the early Earth, it would have been a miracle. So great are the, the problems from a naturalistic explanation. 